Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Colbert, the senior pastor, lead pastor of the Greater True Vine Church, located in the heart of the Soto, Texas. I am so glad that you tune in tonight for another night of Life in the Vine Bible Study. Come on, do me a favor. Give me some likes, give me some hearts out there and share this message on tonight. Listen, I have three different scriptures that I want to give you uh, tonight, and I want to give you these three scriptures because tonight I'm teaching from Galatians 6, 7, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, and Galatians 6 and 8. It's three different scriptures that I'm sharing tonight from Galatians 6, okay? 2 Corinthians 9 and Galatians 6 and 8, okay? And at various parts in this lesson, I'm going to ask if you would just, uh, you know, follow me with those scriptures because I want to give you a word tonight and I want to share it. I want to share it with you the way that God has shared it with me, okay? I usually deal with one particular text and, and preach a textual message, but tonight I want to do a topical presentation. I, I want to use some, some various scriptures to argue this case, and I want to, to teach tonight from the topic God is meeting your need through your seed. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Just tell your virtual neighbor. God is going to meet your need through your seed. I, I want you to catch this because if you catch this word, I promise you it would change your life. It, it man, it would just bless your life. God gave me this word and it is, uh, it, it, you know, basically it's a simple word and it blessed me tremendously and, and I wanted to bless you. So I want you for the next few minutes, I, I want you to make sure that you focus on the word. And if you catch this word, I promise you that your life will be different as we talk about your need is in your seed. See, I, I went to God this week and I prayed to God about the various needs that we have as a church, as a ministry and needs that I have personally. And God answered my prayer by literally telling me these words. God said, Colbert, all of your needs are going to be met through your seed. Now, that was the answer that God gave me. That, that, that was the reply that God gave me that to the answers to my prayer about needs that we have corporately and about the needs that I have individually. God spoke to me and said literally that everything that you need is going to be birthed through the seeds that you sow. And, and you know what? While this word was powerful on one hand, it, it, it was somehow perplexing on the other. Yeah, it, it was perplex, perplexing to me because uh, normally when someone talks about seed and sowing seeds and sowing in a spiritual context, the first thing that that will come to my mind is giving. That when you think about seeding and sowing, if I was to ask you in a spiritual context, not in a farming context, but in a spiritual context, if I was to say, hey, let's sow a seed that most of us would take out our checkbook or our phones, uh, our cash out and reach in our pocketbook or purse, because normally when you think about sowing seed, the first thing we think about is giving money. So, so when God said, I'm going to meet your need through your seed, that, that was just kind of perplexing to me because out of all of the needs that I was praying about were financially based, I, I was praying to God about things beyond money. I, I was praying to God about some spiritual things and, and some relational things and some personal things and even some, yeah, some physical things. But God said to the mental things, to the spiritual things and the physical things and the relational thing, God said the same thing. He said, son, I'm going to meet all of those needs, all of those things. However, I'm going to meet the need through your seed. Well, now, now getting that answer from God, now it forced me to re-examine and to broaden my concept, concept of this issue of sowing and seeding, seeding and sowing. That this issue of seeding and sowing, it just goes beyond more than just money. Because God said he's going to meet all of my need through the seed that I sow. God needs, and I want you to hear me, God needs to have a release seed. 
Yeah, some, somebody just type in the chat, a release seed. God is the one that ministers seed to the soul, that all seed comes from God. That if you need seed, God told Adam in Genesis 1 that the seed came from him, that God furnishes all the seed. So the first thing that we have to understand is this issue of divine ownership. Yeah, somebody just type in the chat, a divine ownership. That God owns everything. Come on, somebody just fire. Let's fire up the chat tonight. Say everything. God owns everything. God's own everything. And the last time I checked, the deed, the property still belongs to God. Because Psalm 24 and 1 says the earth is the Lord. Come on, I wish I had some Bible readers and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalm 50 and 10 says the cattle and the hills, they all belong to God. Hey, God. <laughs> chapter 2 says all of the silver and all of the gold it belongs to God you don't listen watch this you don't even own yourself <laughs> because the Bible says you've been bought with a price and, and so everything belongs to God God is the one according to 2 Corinthians 9 9 and 10 that God ministers seed to the soul and after God ministers seed to the sower, God is the one that multiplies seed to the sower. That it's not our job to try to figure out how to grow the seed. Our job is just to give the seed. That once we sow it, God grow it. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching in here. I said that once we sow it, God is the one that grow it. That once we release it, God increase it. Woo! God is the one who promotes what we present. God is the one that is responsible for stretching out our seed. And um, and a an, uh, demonstration, an awkward demonstration of that is this widow woman at Zarephath. Y'all remember the widow woman at Zarephath that sowed a seed of kindness into the life of the prophet. And the Bible says, and every time she stuck her hand into the meal, woo, there was something always in the barrel. Ooh, somebody ought to just type in the chat and say, that's just like God. Go ahead. That's just like God because you can't be God given. There's some kind of way God has a way of stretching your stuff out. Ooh, God can make the gas tank, the tank of gas last a little longer. Somebody should have shouted right there. Somebody should have just given me some hearts right there. Yes, God can. Yeah, yeah. God can make a tank of gas last longer. God can stretch out a grocery list. God can stretch your money out and God can make it last past the month. God got away. Woo. God can multiply the seed and not only is God is the one that ministers seed to the sower and multiplies seed to the sower. Watch this. But God is the one that moves seed through the sower. Oh yeah. That God has a desire to bless other people besides you. Uh, and so God he'll manifest substance to you to move substance through you. Mm, my God. But the only reason why God is giving it to you is to move it through you. But the moment God proves or God sees that he can't move anything through you, God stopped manifesting stuff to you. Because the only reason he's doing it is to bless people beyond you. But this week, you know what? I've discovered that in order for God to meet our need through our seed, we have to be responsible sowers. Ooh, somebody ought to type that right there. Come on, tell your neighbor, your virtual neighbor, be a responsible sower. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about tonight, being a responsible sower. Yeah, God needs us to be a responsible sower. And the reason why God needs for us to be a responsible sower is because I've discovered that you just can't sow anything. <laughs> No, you can't just sow anything. And the reason why is because every seed contained within it the capability of re reproducing a harvest. So we just can't sow anything because we may mess around and sow something and reap something that we sow. Yeah, you, 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 you just can't sow anything because if you sow negative, mm -hmm, you're going to reap some, something negative. And so you just can't sow any kind of way. You, you just can't so anything yeah you can't you just can't say anything you just can't do anything you just can't act any kind of way because every word mm, is a seed every action is a seed every thought is a seed everything you're doing you are sowing a seed you may not look at it that way but but the words we say 
Mm. Or like seed that is falling into somebody's soil. And words are like an arrow that, that, that is shot that can't be taken back. I, I wish I had a praying church that's watching me tonight. And so the first thing that you got to understand is that we just can't sow any kind of thing. But then secondly, secondly, we just can't sow any kind of place. Uh oh, because every ground is not good ground. That, that you got to be careful where you sow. Mm, mm. Let me say that again. You got to be careful where you sow because not every place and every person is worth investing into. God, let me teach one more time tonight that, that, that you got to be careful because everything and everybody is not worth your effort. It's not worth your energy. It's not, it's not worth your frustration. Come on, I don't have any help tonight. Y'all ain't liking me. Every place and every person is not worth the time. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many people I had to walk away from. How many things I had to walk away from. I, I can't tell you how many association and affiliation and conversation that I just had to disassociate myself with because everything and everybody is not worth the investment. You can't invest your time, your talent, your treasure, your temple. You can't invest all of that into everything and everybody because everybody is not worth the investment. The Bible said that darkness can't even comprehend light. There's some arguments that you are not even have with people. Yeah, the carnal mind can't even handle spiritual mind people. That's a folk that you ought to tr even try to not even to discuss with and converse with because the Bible says that darkness and light has no fellowship with each other. There's some people, hey, you are not want to be around. Why? Because it's not even worth the investment. So, so, so you have to be, watch this, a responsible sower. And the reason why we have to be a responsible sower is because when I look at the scripture, particularly those three scriptures I gave to you earlier, I, I discovered that God has gave, given us a divine discretion <laughs> to make a determination regarding our harvest. Watch this. In other words, we determine how our harvest is going to be. The first thing I want you to see tonight, and I want us to see tonight, is this. That, that God has given us the discretion to determine the identity of our harvest. Woo! You ought to tell your virtual neighbor, we determine the identity of our harvest. Okay. All right, let, let me give you some script. Galatians 6 and 7. Come on, put it on, put it on screen for me, y'all. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So, so watch this. The first thing that you got to understand and you got to catch this is that we pick the kind of harvest we want to have. You, you got to catch this, y'all. We, we pick the kind of harvest that we want to have. God is leaving it up to our discretion. God, God is saying, I'm just sitting back in my throne in heaven and, and I'm just allowing, I'm just allowing divine discretion to, to determine what kind of harvest you're going to have. <laughs> in 2023, God said, it's your decision. You, you decide what kind of marriage is going to be. You decide what kind of relationship is going to be. You decide what kind of ministry is going to be. You decide what kind of classroom is going to be. You decide what kind of atmosphere is going to be. You decide what kind of relationship with your children is going to be. God said you have divine discretion to pick and to choose what kind of harvest you're going to have. You can identify your harvest. That, that's, what, that's what verse 7 is saying. In verse 7, Paul is writing to the church of Galatia, and Paul is telling them that God has given them powerful prerogative to pick the kind of prosperity that they want to have. In, in verse 7, watch this. Paul, and I'm sorry, y'all, I'm just an expository preacher. I'm just one of those dudes that just love the text and try to expose the text and bring it out. Because uh, in verse 7, I hope this ain't boring to you, but Paul uses two powerful words. I want you to look at it. Paul uses the word, watch this, whatsoever, and the word that. Paul says, watch this, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a person sows, that shall he reap. I, I'm going to spend just a few minutes to talk about these two words, whatever, whatsoever, and the word that. 
because the word whatsoever, it gives us a range of what we can sow. Come on. Come on. Somebody just type in the chat a range, a range. God is saying that there's no limit of what you can sow. There's no parameters. There's no barriers of what you can sow. God is saying, I am leaving it up to your discretion that whatsoever kind of seed you want to sow in this marriage, <laughs> in this home, in this church, in this ministry, on your job, in your classroom, in your business, God said it's totally up to you. Watch this. If you want to sow affection and ap apathy, uh, it's up to you. If you want to sow blessings or burden, it it's up to you. If you want to sow concern or coldness, it's up to you. Devotion or deceit, if you want to sow faithfulness or falsehood, if you want to sow uh, holiness or hatred, if you want to sow positivity or poison, if you want to sow understanding and undermining, God says, I'm leaving it up to you in 2023. However you want your harvest to be this year, God says you pick the kind of harvest that you want. See, it's kind of like this. If you can imagine waking up one morning deciding that that uh, that you want to have a garden in your yard, you know, you clean out, clean out and cultivate the land. And, and, and then you got to go to Home Depot in the garden section and, and you're just standing there in front of all those seeds right there. And the salesperson come over. Listen, it's not the salesperson's job to tell you what to plant in your yard. <laughs> it's the salesperson job to give you the seeds based on your decision. Yeah, yeah. You tell the salesperson you want mustard greens and turnip greens and collard greens. You tell the salesperson I, I want to plant tomatoes and okra. You tell the salesperson and, and what the salesperson does, watch this, is give you the appropriate seed to match up your desire. So God says, I'll allow you the flexibility to pick and to choose. Ooh, watch this. Whatever kind of harvest that you are looking for in 2023. But here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Watch this. Because the kicker is Paul uses the word that. Somebody just type in the chat that. Paul says, please be aware that whatsoever you sow. That <laughs> is what you going to read. Oh, that whatsoever you put down in the ground, oh, that is coming up again. That whatever, whatsoever you put out, that's coming right back at you. Paul said God is giving you a range, but he's also guaranteeing you a return. God says if you've been sowing money, yeah, get happy because money is coming back. Whoa! If you've been sowing joy, get happy because joy is coming back. If you've been sowing peace, get happy because peace is coming back. If you've been sowing love, hey, let me tell you something. Get happy because love is coming back. But on the other hand, oh, oh if you've been sowing confusion, if you've been sowing negativity, if you've been sowing hatred, if you've been sowing deceit, whatever you've been sowing, the text says that it's coming back. That, T-H-A-T, that is coming back. Somebody ought to type in the chat, say that it's coming back at you. Yeah, tell them that is coming back at you. It's coming back at you. You got to understand that God says you have to be a responsible sower because you are in charge of your harvest. You have a powerful prerogative to decide this. This will be a happy home. Yeah, this will be a house of love. This will be a house of joy. This will be a house of peace. You have the determination to decide that this will be the house of prayer. Come on, that this will be the house of peace. You, you have to make the decision to make. You have the decision to make. You can decide that this church will be a church that loves God, that will love people, that will save. So you can decide your home. All this. So now the question is, here's the question. In 2023, what kind of harvest do you want? Mm. What kind of harvest you are looking for? What, what kind of seeds are you sowing? And, and, and we have to be responsible sowers. Yeah, in this season, this year, in 2020, we have to be responsible sowers because God says we can de de determine the identity of our harvest. But you know what? I discovered something else. God has given us the discretion to determine the quantity of our harvest. 
Look, look, put it up on the screen. Second Corinthians nine and six. Just check it out, y'all. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Ooh, watch this. Listen, listen, look at me. Look at pastor. We can't blame God for the size of your harvest. Ooh, I done lost all my amen. I know I ain't getting no lights. I know I ain't getting no hearts. Y'all ain't liking me. You cannot blame God for the size of your harvest. God says, y'all got to catch this. God says, I'm leaving it at your discretion. God said, I'm leaving it up to you. You determine how big a harvest you want. You determine how large you want your harvest to be. You determine if, if, if it's going to be small or is it going to be large or is it going to be medium sized? Because God says, I'm giving you a law. And the law is you cannot sow a little <laughs> and get a little. <laughs> uh, and conversely, you cannot sow. Okay, God says it's a law. Come on, somebody type in the chat. Come on, say it's a law. It's a law. You know, I, I read an article one time, and it's very interesting. And it talked about the natural laws of the universe. And, uh, you know, you have... The law of vibration, the law of relativity, the law of cause and effect, the laws of polarity, the laws of rhythm, the laws of gender, the laws of transmutation. These are laws. Some of you are familiar with these laws, the law of vibration. Watch this. It states that if everything vibrates and nothing rests and vibration of the same frequency resonates with each other, that causes an attraction. Yeah. See, that's why we can vibe with some people and we don't vibe with other people based on the law of vibration. And then there's the law of relativity that states that nothing will be unless you relate it to something else, that everything has to be related to something to create perspective. And then you have the law of cause and effect that states for every for after every action, there's an equal and opposite action. For every cause, there is an effect. And for every effect, there is a cause. And then you have the law of polarity, that everything has an opposite, hot and cold, light and dark. And then you have the law of rhythm that suggests that everything has a natural cycle. It's like tides go in, back and forth, and how night follow day. All of these things are laws. Well, I come to tell you tonight, there's another law. <laughs> that's called the law of harvest. And the law of harvest is this, that you cannot sow sparingly and not reap sparingly. You cannot sow bountifully and not reap bountifully because it's a law. Somebody just type in the chat, it's a law. And the law is that, that one that sows much, reaps much, and one that sows little, reaps little. So watch this. Don't hate on somebody else's harvest without knowing the benefit of the seeds that they have sown. Woo, I got the wrong crowd tonight. I'm sorry. I done lost some of y'all. See, there are people right now that will hate on your harvest. There are people right now that will hate on the thing that God has blessed you to have. But here's the problem. The problem is they have no idea how long you've been sowing. They have no idea how much you've been sowing. They have no idea how often you've been sowing. They have no idea how many people you have sown into the life of. And so if you have been sowing a lot, it's just your season to reap a lot. So you don't have to hide your harvest from your haters <laughs> because the truth is told. The truth is that watch this. You've been sowing. Come on. Come on now. It's your decision. Come on. Tell somebody it's your decision. That where you sow, it is. Yeah, come on. The truth be told is, if they have not seen the seeds that you done put in the ground, they don't have a right to criticize the harvest that's coming up from the ground. God says, if you've been sowing a lot, you'll reap a lot. It's a principle. It's a law. God, let me preach in here. God is not going to violate his law. You can decide, oh, watch this, the quantity of your harvest. You ought to tell your virtual neighbor tonight, it's your decision. It's your decision. It's your decision on how big of a harvest do you want? Because the text says you have to be willing to sow. And if you sow much, you will receive much. Ah, but if you don't sow anything, see, there's people 
who always complain about the size of their harvest, but those are the same people that don't have much in the ground. <laughs> oh, but I believe I'm talking to somebody tonight that's watching me right now that you've been putting some stuff in the ground. Okay, I guess I got the wrong crowd. You, you've been sowing some seeds. You've been sowing in secret and sowing in tears and sowing into the life of people. Ooh, you've been sowing. You've been sowing in church. You've been sowing your first fruit. You've been sowing your tithe and your offer. You've been sowing into the man and woman of God. You've been providing clothes for the naked and, clothes and food for the hungry. You've been sowing, providing mentorship for girls and boys. You've been sowing over here. You've been sowing over there. You've been sowing when you're tired and sowing when you don't feel like it. You've been sowing when you got money and sowing when you didn't have much. But guess what, child of God? God told me to tell you tonight. That's right. That it, Let's have church. Let everything that you have put in the ground is coming up again. Okay, you just type in the chat and say it's coming up again. Oh, somebody ought to get excited right now. Somebody ought to have some church with me right now because God told me to tell you that it's time for you to reap the harvest from the seeds that you have sown in faith. Man, I tell you, this word blessed me, y'all. This word blessed me, y'all, because I can determine Watch this, and I'm almost done. I can determine, number one, the identity of my harvest. It's, it's up to me. It's, it's my choice. Mm -hmm. I can choose the nature of this harvest. I, I, I choose what kind of harvest it's going to be. Yeah, just like you can choose to grow collard greens. You can choose to grow love. <laughs> just like you can choose to grow tomatoes. You can, you can choose to grow patience. But then I can decide the quantity of my harvest. Yeah, I can decide how much I want. It is based on how much I sow. And it's not like you have to buy uh, the seeds. You ain't got to buy because the Lord ministers seed to the soil. <laughs> but let me give you this last principle, okay? This bless me. This bless me because this last verse that's found in Galatians 6 and 8, we can determine mm, the eternity of our harvest. Mm, look at what Galatians 6, 8 says. It says, or he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Okay. Let me explain this. Because see, in this verse, Paul is talking about sowing into two different areas. Yeah, he talks about sowing into the flesh and he talks about sowing into the spirit. And I want to explain this because oftentimes we misunderstood this whole issue of sowing into the flesh because it sounds like it's negative. Yeah, it's a negative connotation because Paul says, watch this, that if you sow into the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Because he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And that has a negative connotation. It suggests at the beginning of the text that it's sinful to sow into the flesh but that's not what paul is saying no you got to look at it. come on flow with me paul is saying that when you sow into the flesh the end result will be things that you've sown into that will not last yeah now paul is not saying that sowing into the flesh is sinful because watch this we have to slow sow into the flesh yeah we do because our flesh have needs yeah, there's some things. Come on, let's just be real. Let's be honest. There's some things that we need. Yeah, there's some things that the flesh needs. Our, our flesh need clothing. Our flesh need food and drink. Our flesh needs shelter. Our flesh needs transportation. Our flesh needs medicine. Our flesh needs to bathe and wash. Our flesh need to be cared for. Our flesh need to be sown into. There's some things that we got to have for our flesh. Are y'all hearing me tonight? There's something that we got to have for our flesh. So Paul is not suggesting that we don't sow into the flesh, but Paul is suggesting that whatever we sow into the flesh, it's not going to last. Eventually, it's going to corrode. Eventually, it's going to fade away. Paul is suggesting don't spend all your time and all your energy trying to sow seeds into the flesh because nothing that you sow regarding our flesh is going to last. The house is not going to last. 
The car is not going to last. The clothes are not going to last. The food is going to pass through. Nothing that you do for your flesh is going to last. Utterly, it's going to corrupt. It's going to fade away. And so Paul is saying, because sowing into the flesh is going to fade away, he said, take some time to sow into something that's going to last forever. Paul is saying, please, please don't waste all your time and your energy trying to buy things that money can buy and things that water can drown and ice can freeze. But Paul is suggesting that the best things in life are not things at all. Paul is suggesting that, that we ought to sow into some stuff that's going to produce an eternal result. Ooh, it's like blessing somebody else, like, like making sure that your children are saved. It's like making sure that your household knows the Lord. Sow seeds into something that's going to produce some eternal result. It's like when you leave here, you'll leave with the satisfaction of knowing that I may not have left my child a house or a car, but I left them the knowledge that Jesus saves, that, that they know Jesus. See, some of us that's watching, we owe God a crazy praise right about now. Come on, can I be real? Because most of us, we were not raised or born with a silver spoon. We were not reared or embraced with grandparents that left us with a trust fund. But don't think <laughs> that they didn't leave us something that don't produce eternal reward because you ought to thank God tonight that if mama didn't leave you possession, she left you with the knowledge of how to pray. Oh, I can't get no help. That if mama didn't leave you with a house, she left you with some hope. If mama didn't leave you with material things, she left you with the master. If mama didn't leave you with gold, she introduced you to God. You ought to thank God that every now and then you're sowing some seeds in such a way that when you leave this earth, your works will follow you. Woo, I got the wrong crowd tonight. Come here. Come here, Apostle Paul. But Paul said, Pastor C, you're right. Because I made up my mind that in the latter half of my life that I was trying to sow some seeds that will produce several things. He said, number one, Paul says, I was trying to sow seeds that will guarantee me a place that when I leave planet Earth. See, that's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, when Paul was writing to the church at Corinth and Paul recognized that his time on earth was almost over, Paul told the church at Corinth that he wasn't worried about where he was going. He wasn't worried about where he lived on earth because, see, Paul knew that without a shadow of a doubt, that if this earthly house, oh my God, let's have church. Uh, if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, he said he had another building of God. He said a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heaven. Paul knew that if I leave this place, if I leave this world, he said I've sown enough seeds to make sure I got a mansion on high. See, some of y'all are concerned about the wrong house. See, you're concerned about the house that's behind that gated community. You're concerned about the house that you're still making payments on. But Paul talks about another house. Paul said, Pastor C, I've sown enough seeds, see, that if you miss me from preaching down here, he said, don't cry as if you have no hope, but come on up to Christ's glory. Oh, somebody ought to type in the chat, tell them that's the kind of seeds I'm sowing. Oh, my God. But Paul said, See, watch this. He didn't stop there because Paul told Timothy, I'm not only sowing seeds to lift up a place, but Paul told Timothy, I'm sowing the kind of seeds that would guarantee me a possession. Woo! <laughs> Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Paul said, Timothy, he said, I fought a good fight. Let's have church. I finished my course and I kept my faith. And because I found, oh, uh, I, because I fought right, uh, because I kept the faith, because I finished my course, God got something laid up for me. And he didn't talk about material possession. He didn't talk about golden slippers. He didn't talk about tent making skills. He didn't talk about his education. Paul didn't talk about the degrees behind his name. But Paul said, Timothy, oh my God. He said, I got something laid up for me. He said, it's a crown of righteousness. I want to talk to somebody that's watching tonight. You ought to have something waiting on you. When you log off tonight, you ought to have the reassurance that I got a crown waiting on me. I got a long white robe waiting on me. I got golden slippers waiting on me. I got a house in heaven waiting on me. You ought to just type in the chat to your virtual neighbor and say, I sold some seeds. <laughs> Go ahead. I sold some seeds. That's 
But hey, but that's not all. Because Paul said, Pastor C, he said, I got a place after I leave. He said, I got a possession after I leave. He said, but last but not least, I got a praise from God waiting on me. He said, because see, when I get to heaven, he's not going to call my name. Oh, yeah, he's not going to say Paul. He's not going to say Charles. He's not going to say Vidal. He ain't, he's not going to say Webb. He's not going to say Savoy. He's not going to say Rita, Tamisa, Alberta. But when we get to heaven, we're going to hear him say, Servant of God, <laughs> well done. Yeah, you've done what I told you to do. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm about to get happy. He said, you kept the faith. You went to the hungry and fed the hungry. You went to the shelter and closed the shelter. You went outdoors and preached the gospel. When people were crying, you consoled them. When people were confused, you counseled them. When people were broken, you passed them back together. Oh, when we did Matthew 25 alive, when the pastor said, let's go and help the community, you did that. Servant of God, well done. Well, child of God, I come to tell somebody tonight that if you've been sowing seeds of faithfulness, baby, it's your time to reap a harvest. I need somebody online who's been sowing good seeds. I need somebody who's been sowing some faithful seeds. I need somebody that's watching who has been sowing holy seeds to give God a crazy praise right about now because the Bible says your season to reap what you've sown is on the way. Woo! You ought to type in the chat for the last time and say, I'm reaping the harvest. Come on, come on, come on. Encourage your virtual neighbor and tell them that the seed that you sown is on the way. Yeah, I said it. Come on, tell your virtual neighbor that when you see me shouting, I'm reaping my harvest. When you see me driving good, I'm reaping my harvest. When you see me living good, I'm reaping my heart. I feel like preaching in here. Uh, I'm reaping my heart. When you see me dressing good, I'm reaping my harvest. I I've sown into the hungry. I've sown into the needy. I've sown into the seniors. I've sown into the children. I've sown into ministry. I've sown in the faithfulness. I've sown in the hurting. I've sown into the weary. I've sown into the folk that I didn't know. And God says, the seeds that I put down, they're getting ready to sprout up. <laughs> you ought to give God some crazy praise right about now. You ought to praise him like you'd have lost your mind. Hallelujah. Come on, do I have a witness out here? Come on, if you're reaping the harvest, lift up your hands and give God a crazy praise. Come on, get your emoji hands. Come on, get those virtual hands. Come on, that's the hearts. That's a new hallelujah. Why are you praising God? Why are you shouting? Why are you dancing? Why are you jumping, Pastor? I'm jumping because I know woo, that what's in the ground. I know what's in the ground. I'm shouting because I know what's in the ground. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I know what I put in the ground. I've sowed. Tell somebody I got a seed in the ground. I got some seeds. I got some seed. I got a seed in the ground. This is my season. Woo. This is my season for a breakthrough. This is my season. Hey, Baba Shanidido. For a harvest. This is my seed. And you can't expect to reap nothing. You hadn't sown nothing. My God, I got to go. I got to get out of here. Listen, come on. If you need prayer tonight, call the number. Email us. Come on. Come on. If you, if you, if you want to be saved tonight, call that number. Come on. If you don't know Jesus or if you just want to rededicate yourself, call us. We'll help you through it. We'll help you through it. That's what we're here for. That is what we're here for. God bless you. Listen, let's sow. It's sowing time right now. Come on. Come on. God is going to meet your need through your seed. Come on. Come on. You just heard the word of God tonight. Let's sow something. Sow something tonight. Some of you haven't sowed since <laughs> we've been watching virtual Bible study. But come on. I dare you tonight. Sow something tonight. Yeah. The Bible just said it. Come on. You sow sparingly. You reap sparingly. But sow something tonight. Put a seed in the ground. This is good ground here. All right. The giving is on the screen. There are many ways to give. We're still in our first fruit season. Yes, that's right. We're still in our first fruit season. And God has been blessing the people of God tremendously. And uh, so you can give your first fruit offering. Make sure you uh, type in the memo first fruit because every first fruit that we receive, we pray over it. Yeah, now, not, just, not that we just don't pray over the tithes and the offerings, but we also pray for the first fruit, but we pray for those uh, separately because we're doing it biblically like the, when the children of Israel 
will bring their first fruit offering to the priest. He lifted up at the beginning of the year and give God a wave offering because they trusted God that if they give their first, he established the rest. Yeah, the first always established the rest. And so, yes, why don't you give that first fruit? The first fruit is still coming in. And God, we, we just bless you. And we thank you for everyone that have sown. All right. All right. Listen, I'm excited, y'all. Well, first of all, last Sunday, my God, you had to be here to experience the glory of God. We had an after party like none other. Man, my God. I, I, I let the pe people didn't want to go home. So I let the one that wanted to leave, leave. And the one that wanted to stay, stay. And let me tell you something. The one that stayed, hallelujah. My God, it was an after party like never before. Now, let me tell you something. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. And uh, when I was out in the world, that's what we used to do. We like, we always look for the after party. We don't, we don't party all night in the club, but we like, where the after party at? That's that overflow. Well, in the spirit. And I'm not in the world no more. I'm, I'm in the kingdom. And uh, there is <laughs> an overflow. And man, my God, there was an overflow in this house, in this very house, in this sanctuary where people couldn't even go home. People was in, in the hallway praising God, trying to get out the door and just couldn't give out the door. They were just saying, Lord, thank you. They couldn't stop telling God. And when I think of it now, they couldn't stop telling God, thank you, thank you. And so, my God, listen, you need to come. You need to come. 10 o'clock. Hey, hey, if you're in the area, listen, don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. Yeah, virtual church is good. I love it. But sometimes you got to be in the midst of the saints. But you got to be where the atmosphere is conducive for a miracle, for a breakthrough. Amen. But listen, I'm excited because this Sunday, and I know y'all what y'all think. Yeah, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. But this Sunday, it's not only Super Bowl Sunday, and it is Super Sunday, but not because of the Super Bowl, but because it's Women's Day, and then it's also our First Lady birthday. That's right, that's right, it's her born day. And uh, we thank God, listen, we are the women of the Lord is in charge on that Sunday, uh, and men of God, we're gonna support them, we're gonna encourage them, and those that are watching online, listen, if you're in the area, we wanna pack this place out. But most of all, we want to also celebrate our first lady. We want to honor her because she's worthy of it. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She's one of the hardest working first ladies. And uh, we thank God for her. We're going to honor her and celebrate her. We're going to bless her real good. I'm asking everybody that can and will at least share a $50 seat off. I know many of you are going to give more than that because that's just how you feel about your first lady. But listen, not only that, we're going to have some church. We got a powerful woman of God that's going to minister to us. Yeah, the evangelist Donna Gorge. Yeah, she's coming. She's coming to minister to this house. And uh, I can't wait. So you need to get here early. Get here early. In fact, we'll be here at 9 a.m. as we always uh, be here at 9 a.m. during our intercessory prayer time and our morning manner time. So you need to get here, get you a good seat, and let's enjoy, listen, Lady Cobra Day. All right? All right, God bless you. Can't wait to see you. Remember this, why settle for good when great is available? God bless you. Can't wait to see you.